46-year-old William Golston Sr. made his first court appearance today facing a murder charge in the death of a Ben Davis High School freshman. Prosecutors say Golston strangled 15-year-old Dominique Allen and then set her body on fire in an attempt to cover up the crime. He pleaded not guilty and asked for a public defender. This was also the first time that Allen's sisters came face to face with Golston. Indescribable. We just, like I said, we have to take this day by day. And, you know, some days are going to be better than the other. To see him in person and to see, actually the other day when I seen his face, I got, I had, I broke out in hives. So it's like my nerves, I don't, I can't explain it. William Golston has been in and out of jail since he was a teenager. Probably the most visual example of that is a look at this. These are Golston's 24 mug shots, all representative of his lengthy criminal history that spans 30 years. With so many crimes over so many years, we wanted to know why Golston was out of jail in the first place. 13 Investigates reporter Sandra Chapman is looking for those answers tonight. Sandra? Well, John, good time behavior in prison classes allow Golston's early release from prison. When it comes to his parole violations, we went straight to those who had the power to make Golston serve the rest of his time. The Indiana Parole Board at issue predicting human nature and crime. This board does find you guilty of violating Rule 7. Does hereby revoke your parole, assess you the balance of time. Just like that, the Indiana Parole Board ordered one inmate after another back to prison for violating parole. Some had dirty drug tests. Do you think it'd be real wise for you to be out there and be uh, using a uh, synthetic drug? Some moved without proper notification. I didn't go to the drug classes and um, I didn't report. While others committed another crime. We're going to see you in a, in a year to determine if we should let you out in advance of that. In many cases, the inmates got a year to think about their mistake. That's not what happened with accused killer William Golston Sr. earlier this year. Golston was released on parole in November 2012 as an habitual offender and serious violent felon on a weapons charge. No reported problems for a year. Then... In January, Golston was arrested on parole violations for failing to show up for drug classes and testing positive for cocaine. Thor Miller is the chairman of the parole board. He had a history of substance abuse. Golston was ordered back to prison for 60 days and released in March. Two months later in May, he was back behind bars, same violations. In July, he again sat before this board and got another release. Miller defends that decision, saying research shows it can take up to six times before drug treatment is successful. There is always a risk when um, uh, action is taken that it may not be appropriate, but we try and balance things. By August, the Indianapolis Parole District declared Golston delinquent. Worse yet, the state had no idea where he was living. 23 days later, 15-year-old Dominique Allen was murdered. Golston was finally arrested in Bluffton on the parole violation November 10th. Days later, he was charged with Allen's murder. Very, very rarely has this occurred. Miller says this is the first new crime Golston's been charged with while on parole. There is no way anyone can predict human behavior, especially when drugs and alcohol are mixed in. No way to predict, despite more than 24 mugshots connected to more than 35 arrests and multiple probation and parole violations. Sometimes things go the way we hope that they will go, that they'll be reformed. Other times it doesn't work out that way. Tonight the parole board has issued a warrant for William Golston's arrest for violating his parole, this time on the charge of murder. If Golston is found guilty in the Dominique Allen case, he would have to serve out his prison time on the 2006 case first until September 2018 before a murder sentence would kick in.